I'm just showing you a brief desert gardening project, I guess I'd call it. This is a little area I have between a shelf, shelf, <laughs> shed, and some walls. There's just tons of plants growing. I never weed here, as you may be able to tell. Um, although, to be honest, I don't weed for a very specific reason. And one reason is because uh, usually desert soil looks like this, and I'm going to have a picture up here so you can see. But if you let weeds grow, then they die off and they hit the ground, and then you get soil that looks like this. And in the desert, this is a huge deal. <laughs> this is not soil you usually find. The fact that I can stick my hands in it, that's huge. <laughs> so me letting my weeds grow, this is a few years worth of you know, weeds and dead grasses and stuff, and it helps my soil. It also attracts little critters that sometimes, you know, have a little poo here, so I get little manure and everything. So that's the reason. Right here, as you may be able to tell, this little spot we've got a little open, I'm going to be planting this plant. It's called, oh, can't see it very well in the light, can you? It's called a pale leaf wolfberry. It's actually a related to the acai berry, if you've heard of that, except it's native to the Sonoran Desert in the southwest, so I can get my little acai berries. Once this is planted and established, I do not have to water it, and in the desert, that's huge. The other reason I let plants grow where they will is actually because I have been researching as much as I can the uses of common plants, and so I take out some of the weeds that I don't want, and I keep the weeds that do a good job for me, like this plant right here. This is called camphor weed. That's actually medicinal. This is a type of local tobacco. I'll have the names for these down in the comments, or you know what I mean, the little thing underneath. This is a tobacco. It's also medicinal. This attracts a lot of bees in the area. I hate it otherwise. As soon as my acai berry comes, I'm going to have other things here that would be more beneficial. This grass, crummy little grass, is actually super helpful because underneath he's growing oregano. That's what this is. This oregano in an area that gets up to 117 degrees Fahrenheit in the summertime and gets 12 inches of rain a year, I water that oregano maybe once a year. So because it gets shade from the grass and all these plants keep all this moisture here, I don't have to water it. It's amazing. And then this little thing here is not only medicinal, it's also edible, and you can actually use the little stalk when it hardens up as a little stick for uh, starting a fire by hand, which I just find kind of cool even if I couldn't do it to save my life. <laughs> so that is briefly my little area here of my uh, desert garden. Ta-da! And here it is, my little plant I'll planted. You can see just just in there a little. And on the uh, downhill slope, I don't know if you can see it really well, there's a little mounded wall because here, here you're always trying to get more water in the soil. So you almost always have sunken um, gardening. And, and well, a lot of people actually also do raised bed gardening because it is easier than digging in the hard soil, but it's not actually as good for the water. So um, if you're trying to conserve water, the sunken bed gardening is a little bit better as I understand it. So that's what I do. You build a little retaining wall here that'll catch water on the downhill side. And uh, just a sec, let me show you what this is going to look like after I put all the mulch back. Here's what it looks like with all the mulch back in place. Yeah, my little plant is hidden under this grass I pulled over it. The reason is, it's the middle of the summer right now. It's actually kind of a brutal time to plant new plants here, but because of my lovely disorder, I can't really do much gardening in the winter. I'm too sick. So this is the time for me to be able to do gardening. As a result, I have my little tricks like this, which is using what's around the plant to give it a little shade, since I don't have, you know, tons of money to buy shade cloth all over the place and everything else. Uh, so this will work pretty well. Um, however, you can see why it makes watering my yard for friends um, a little bit of a pain in the ass because they can't find my plants to water them. <laughs> and you also notice right now the mulch is not very thick. It's pretty small. Um, there is a reason for this. In plants that you are watering continually, mulch, a, a good thick heavy mulch will keep a lot of the moisture in underneath the mulch and it's wonderful and great. If you're doing this, however, my little plant here where I'm watering it until the root's established for maybe about a year, maybe two years, and then I'm not planning to water it again, um, unless it's, you know, really, really bad drought. The re and so when that happens, a really he heavy, thick mulch is a 
bad idea because what happens is the mulch either doesn't allow the water, what water you get, to penetrate and so it just stays on top of the mulch and the soil doesn't get it or the mulch absorbs so much of the water that does fall that the soil still doesn't get much and it, the mulch gets more soil, more water than the plant underneath the mulch does. So in an environment where you're planning not to water the tree for a while, if you're in the desert, just like a little mulch, like half inch to an inch, um, as I understand it, seems to work fairly well to help keep the, the ground a little moist. And the other thing that works well is stones. Um, if you're in a shaded area so the sun isn't going to reflect off of this rock and add heat to your plant, which can just kill off your plants if you don't have the right ones, if you have some shade, putting a rock under here, or even better, a rock underneath the mulch, like that, you will have more, not, not completely covering everything in rocks, but some big stones here and there, you'll actually have more water retention underneath that rock, and that can actually help the plants. That's actually something when I was very young, um, happened to work at a national park in the southwest, and they were practicing some ways of gardening they thought the Anasazi might participate in, and laying big rocks in areas where you were gardening under the shade was one of the ways they practiced, and it seemed to work fairly well. Wow. So that's something I do now. And yeah, it actually seems to help. I seem to do, have plants do better if I have at least a few big rocks that aren't reflecting sun on them near the plants I plant. And that is my little, uh, my little wolf fairy. Go well. I'll try and keep up and tell you what's happening to it.